Well, as you know from uh, my prior videos, we were building the barn out back and the boy showed up and me and him been working on the barn. Uh, we were doing a really good job getting it all enclosed in. We're going to use it for construction, but then Ricky kind of needed a studio for a month before the weather gets nice to do some of his work. So we spent a couple weeks, we put some insides in it, some lighting, some electric, and pretty much finished the inside made it into a studio so that he could film a couple videos here. So what we got is, uh, is the barn out back and uh, like I say right now it's, uh, it's a video studio for Ricky Wright, the artist. Yeah, guys, it looks good. You've been uh, hard at it, junk man. Well, it was three, four weeks of uh, non-stop construction work. 24-7 is what you call it. You go home, you go to bed, you sleep for four hours, and you wake up and you go again. But anyway, it's ready to go. A uh, nice studio for Ricky to work out of for the time being till the weather gets nice. Yeah. And we got it loaded up with uh, artwork done by Ricky. I like these old trucks you got up here. Those are a story. They are from the 60s. The one has never been out of the box. The U-Haul toy trucks made by Nylint, N-Y-L-I-N-T. Uh, they've never been out of the box and played with, and you, you don't even touch them unless you got a pair of gloves on. The one on the right, uh, it's like a early 60s Ford pickup. It's even got the independent rear sus front suspension, independent uh, axles, and it's got the U-Haul trailer. And the Econoline, Econoline uh, had uh, U-Haul, a bunch of those trucks too, and that one's never been out of the box. Yes, where did you get them from? How did you come across those? My good right-hand man, Paulie. His dad had them in the closet uh, since probably 1965. Really? Uh, he's still living. He's 94 years old, lives up in Lansing, Illinois. We call him the Admiral, Andy. And uh, he worked at... Uh, Whiting Standard Oil and his wife worked for a company that did some work for U-Haul and they were offered these toys back then and she bought them brought them home but I guess Andy wouldn't let the kids play with them so they were in the closet and they just sold that house a year ago uh, after building it in the early 50s and they were in the closet and Admiral says uh, Andy says Paulie take these with you so I says hey Paulie let me borrow them trucks or a good conversation piece but uh, yeah, it's like people say we got a barn find car. Well, you got to start looking in the closets and get some closet find old trucks because uh, it's amazing what's in some people's closets, attics, and basements. So I, I see you got some stuff already. Is this stuff ready for sale that you got made up here? Oh uh, yes, course? yes, I believe it is. Yeah, got maybe a little bit more touch up on some of them here and there. Maybe want to put it like a shadow on autos, you know? Right. Yeah. Wow, this is a nice glass uh, here. You don't see hand painting on glass no more. This is yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll last a long time. Uh, you a lot of times you got to take a razor blade to scratch it off. You know, you know, you know it, it stays on good. A lot of people don't realize that Ricky can paint a storefront also on glass. Uh, that's so. Yeah. He did one, and he shows what he can do, and that's all, all painted with uh, enamel paint on, on plate glass. Yeah. Like in the olden days, a lot of storefronts were lettered up. That piece there goes over uh, near Dollywood at uh, exit 407 on uh, Tennessee Highway 66 to an old garage over there, and that's where that one will end up. Nice. Well, maybe we'll get a picture of it once it's installed. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. So we got you a, a mailbox here. Oh, uh, yeah. But it's, it's empty right now, folks. We need Ricky to fill it up. And the junk man, Barn Outback Studio. So they can mail stuff to you if they wanted a picture. Yeah. They can mail it right there to that address. Yeah. Yeah. Rick you know, it's empty. We need to get fill it full, folks. So they can uh, contact you and uh, mail you something to draw and you can give them a price on it. So let's look over here. You got some stuff that you're going to be pinstriping, looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, them old cars uh, get back in the. 50s look like. Yeah, have you done much pinstriping? A little bit, not a lot, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you got right here, this is a, what kind of hood is that? Uh, man, what is well, that? We, we got to call that garage art. That is actually a, a 1949 Cadillac Fastback or a Turtleback. That's the deck lid off of that. And that uh, Roy's Friendly Standard Station was in the town I grew up in. And my grandpappy worked there. His name was Pop Pop. It was old Pop Pop. He worked at Roy's Friendly Standard. It was on the corner of uh, Torrance Avenue and Ridge Road. Is that for sale? Is this no, a, no, that's, that's, that's a personal piece for me for, yeah, okay. garage art. But I want to show people that Ricky can do garage art also. 
And, and these here, he'll tell you about them. Yeah, these is, is wash, washing machine fronts. You know, uh, but they, they make good signs also. That's right. Recycle yeah. everything, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, green, you might say. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. There's actually another sign in the corner over here. Uh, there was a washing machine lid a week ago, and the price sign was a washing machine front a week ago, but them we just used this past week, so for the advertising here. But really great tin to paint on people, and I mean, it's like free. Uh, it's your old washing machine front or the top lid to it, and uh, good stuff to paint on. Yeah, now this is how a lot of times I get started on these doors, uh, just use chalk. You know, just chalk it out real quick. Then if, if, if you don't like the way it looks or whatever, just wipe it off and start all over again. Is that something you got sold or is that just a spec piece that you're doing? Spec piece, yeah. Piece. Now this one I got sold. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, a gentleman from uh, South Carolina came up in person and seen me at, at the meet and greet at the rugby. Oh, that's right. I remember you talking to him yeah. right about that. Ricky Monlax. And I'm going to paint his door. All I like is, is putting a couple lines through here with some writing on it. All right, well, yeah. we might get to catch you doing that then here in just a Yeah, bit. yeah, yeah, I'd be glad to. He, he, he wanted that to be on the video. Here's a Mountain Dew sign that you've done, $350 on that one. Yeah. That looks like, what, about four foot tall or? Uh, five, it's five foot. Five foot. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Yes, sir. Yeah, we like Mountain Dew around here. I know that. Yeah. And well, there's a camel. I think I need to put some uh, shadow underneath this here. This is a David May. He, he came up all the way from Cookville, Tennessee. He seen a video at Tiffany's. And so he, he got, and, and also seen video was a junk man, you know, Ricky and junk man also. And he decided, you know, he, he wanted a door for a friend. So he, he uh, commissioned me to do, do a door for him. Did a good job on it right yeah, there. Thank you. That took a little bit of work on that yeah, one. It did, yeah. Now this is not one of your doors you do for $99 because no. you put a lot more work in that, I'm sure, no, right? No, no, sir, it's not. Uh, you know, it's Something like this runs about what? Around 250 to 300 at least. So they could just tell you how much they want to spend and then I, that's how much work you'll put into yeah, it. Yeah. So you can work with their yeah. budget, can't you? Yes, sir. Well, looks like you're getting ready to get paid there, Ricky. Yes, yeah, sir. This is, this is $300 and this man is worth every penny. Every penny. Thank you, Thank brother. you. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate you. you, brother. Now, Mark and Kelly, uh, they're out there in Nebraska. Uh, they are super fans of uh, the channels that y'all uh, have out here. Uh, they told us about what was going on and what they liked. And next thing you know, we contacted, we went through Tiffany, we found Ricky, and we found all of you. And that's how we all hooked up on the channels. And uh, because of these guys right here, they are super fans of your channel. Well, tell them we said hello. I'm sure they'll be seeing this on video one day as soon as well, I get it done. Yes, sir. And trust me, he, he'll be tickled to death if he's not going to cry about this. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I, I appreciate doing the door for you. Well, that's a heavy door. Uh, What's that off of? What's that door off of? About an 81 Chevrolet, I guess, a, a, a square body. It's a Chevy, it'll do Mark right. Yeah, and it's got a little rust on it. Mark and Kelly both love the Chevy, so there we go. Kind of fit so in now it. how are you gonna get that to him? Well, we're probably gonna have to go out that way if he doesn't make it our way. <laughs> okay. It's all right. Well, tell him to send us a picture of it when he gets it put up, okay? Most definitely. All right. Appreciate that is a uh, map from probably 1935, six or seven of Tennessee and Kentucky before the, the interstate, interstate hype. Yeah, before the interstate. Before the interstates went in. Yeah, yeah. Correct. That's right. Now, yeah, do you yeah. remember where Jamestown was Monday? Yeah, well, perfect. Sit down there, show me. And do you remember what car dealerships were in Jamestown? Yeah, yeah. What was there? Ford Garage, the Chevrolet Garage, Dodge and Plymouth, Hudson, and uh, Pontiac and, and uh, Willis is there. All them, all them roads are, all them dealerships are. Uh, the ones that right frog on the, the Chevrolet garage, uh, only Chapman on the uh, Dodge place, uh, Wentz, uh, Wentz, uh, Wentz Stevens on the Ford place, Ledbetter's on the Ford, uh, the Pontiac and Willis place. And uh, they're in Jamestown, all in five places, been a lot for years. How many, there, how many dealerships do they have now? 
they don't have none. None. They're all gone. Well, none of them, they're all gone. You know, they said they went to, you know, bypasses or other state counties and things like that, you know. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't prosper as like they did, you know. So we, that, all them places we went, they're all gone down. As far as I know, ain't none of them left. When you was a kid, there was quite a few dealerships around here, wasn't there? When I was a kid, that was back in, in the 40s. Yeah. 1940s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Yeah. What, what was the economy around here? What did most people do in Jamestown back then when you was a kid? What they, kind of work? Uh, cut timber or uh, made liquor. Made liquor? Yeah. Or, or sold brandy. 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 That's during the Depression, too. We was there during the Depression, too. See, we did, everybody was, just got by on hogs and cattle where they had to, to live by and make their gardens, you know. And that's how they lived. You know, that everybody helped each other and, and uh, done the best they could, you know. That's all we could do. You know, and they didn't have no economy of no kind. Last time we, we talked, uh, you talked about when uh, you'd get in trouble at home, your mom would make you go sleep in one of the cars, the yeah, old cars, John yeah, cars in the yard. Yeah, yeah, well, that was you know, uh, when we got to be about 16, 17 year old. Uh, She'd put you out of the house and put you in no junk car. Yeah, well, then we're asleep. Yeah. Then have the beds in the house because here come company or something like that, and we'd go out there in the old cars, yeah. We had a Packard, we had Chevrolet's, we had Ford, uh, 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 55 Ford convertible. We had, I had all kinds of stuff. That's what, what, Sleeping. You just pick which one. What's the longest you stayed in one of them cars at one stretch? Oh, I'd say 12 hours. 12 hours? Yeah, overnight. Overnight. Yeah, overnight. Yeah. Yeah. How many nights in a row had you had to stay up? Every night. Every night? Yeah, my, my mommy made my bed out there. That's my mommy made my bed. So you stayed there full time? Yeah, and, and the head company. Yeah. They, they, they went there and slept with me. Oh, the company comes left <laughs> in the car, too. Yeah. How about that? Them old boys come from, out from the, uh, the country, you know, and come to town on Saturday. Yeah. They didn't have nowhere else to go. They didn't want to go back home, so they come up and take the Mondays in the cars. They sleep in old junk cars out in the yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, yeah. That would have been quite a video to yeah, make of that, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would have back in them days. Them days was hard, wasn't it? Yeah, back, and to beat all, beat all, after the, they, all this went through and happened, and things slowed down, we had uh, I believe eight or ten cars out there. And my mother sold every one of them for sixty-five dollars. Sold your bedroom, didn't she? She sold the bedroom too, because we got we up and gone home that time, you know. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't come. She didn't want you to come back. That's what it was. Oh, she had, yeah. Oh, she couldn't stand it. And she wanted the money. She didn't have no money. She just wanted some money. Wanted the money. And the guy it, it bought them. The way after had a, the thing out there on, in the street, just crushed them up and hauled them off. How about that? Yeah, for the war union. Yeah, uh, during World War Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It was in the Korean War, right? Yeah, that's in the Korean War. Yeah. And yeah, what yeah. year did you serve in the uh, service? Fifty-three to fifty-five. Well, thank yeah, you for your yeah, service, yeah. Mandy. Thank you, thank you. Well, yeah, yeah. He was a, I was eighteen year old. Eighteen. Um, they they bought. Uh, they called me. I had to go. I didn't. I didn't volunteer. They come and got me. Come drug you out. Huh? Yeah, yeah. You made it through it, though, didn't you? You made it through it. Yeah, that's yeah. Me and, me and my twin brother. Well, how about that? Yeah, yeah. We had made it through there. Yeah, we sure did. We had. Me too. And now I'm 90 year old. 90? 90, 90 year old. How about that? Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Yeah. And I'm getting on pretty good and getting around pretty good. I you know, can't do what I used to do, but I can get around a little bit. Yeah. yeah you yeah. still drive your Mustang out there, though. You're yeah, still, still sporting around, ain't you? Yeah, 90 yeah, year old with yeah. a, in a convertible. Yeah, that's right. Got Grandpa and Grandma in back there, ain't it? Let's go look at them. <laughs> you, well, I'll get some pictures while you leave, okay? Okay. Let's go out and get my car now. Let's get all this other stuff here, here brother. Take no. Me, take me no, no problem. I got no more surprises for you today, Monday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go show them your car. Yeah. I've had this car ever since 19, and I've had it 23 years. I bought it up there out of California, and bought it here, and he didn't want it, so he had it. I've had it ever since. It's an 89 Mustang. Yeah. 89 model, convertible. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Got your grandma and grandpa in the back? Yeah, look there. Yeah, look there. Yeah. Where'd, where'd you get them at? I thought they'd give them to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so you're riding around with company there, ain't you? Yeah, well, I thought, well, you know, that's crazy, but I'm one of them crazy people anyway, you know. I like, I like, <laughs> like things like that. A lot of people don't, you know, but I do. Well, yeah. Oh, I do nothing like that, you know, but it's yeah. Looks like it's got the factory wheels on it yeah, still. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice car. Yeah. Well, that's about all I can do for you, son. I didn't you know. I appreciate it. Thank you a lot, buddy. Good yeah. talking to you. Yeah, have a good day. Take care of the junk man for me. He's my buddy. I'll do it. Ben, what's his name? Okay? All right. Okay.
junk man and my uh, friend here, Private Ryan, we're going to build a small 336 foot under roof tiny house. And we're building one here basically as like a model home. We're going to build the shell of the house, complete dried in shingles, windows, doors, all the siding, uh, quality construction. And it's a site built house. And then we're going to offer to come to people's lots and build one on their lot. Uh, we, of course, would like a prep lot, which means fairly level. We're not going to work on the top of a mountainside or whatever, but uh, that's our game plan. And we're making the first one here. And within uh, two or three weeks, we'll have the roof on it and all that. We'll be able to uh, give people like a tour through it. And there's an information board, billboard out back that we'll take a picture of in a minute. And that pretty much tells everything what we're doing here with this uh, little house. All quality construction. Well, that's to be interesting. Have, uh, is it based on one of the, the ones you've already built down here that you've already no, built? No, this is, different? Just a, this is just a small 16-foot uh, by 21-foot, uh, 6-inch tiny house under roof. Well, you ready to do some paint, Ricky? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All righty. What are you working on first? Okay. Let me see here. <clears throat> well, um, back in January the 21st, uh, uh, we had a, a what a, a get to get together, uh, uh, you know, meet and greet at rugby. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, and a, a man came up all the way from South Carolina just to get a, to buy a door to see me in person to to, to get a door, and I thought, mm. well, now that, that was real nice of him, and he even paid me in advance. First right. time he seen me, he, and and he paid me, and and, uh, and he gave me a he sent junk man a picture for me to go by, and. Uh, so I picked out the door, you know, it's kind of rough, but that's what, what he wanted, you know, just a little rust on, on here and there, give it character, you know. So you got to finish up this, this wording right yeah, at the yeah, bottom? Yeah, the words, golf carts, accessories, and uh, Gaffney, South Carolina, is that right? Yeah. And, uh, and the phone number. Gaffney. So you have, let's see how you space them letters out there. Show us okay. How you I just try to just uh, kind of like a, in, in case of, I get them wrong, I can always wipe, wipe them and start all over again about chalk. Okay. Okay, now this, see, now this is off. See, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, redo it in a minute. But I'll show you what good thing about chalk. See, I'm going to go ahead and use all, all these two. Yeah, I'm already. Uh, you know, saving room already. There you go. Got you another one done. Yep. I hope you like it, Ricky. Well, I'm fixing the letter of this here door here. Uh, I guess um, since it's dark or black, I'm, uh, white or yellow or any light color shows that, you know, good on, on black, just like that over there, you know. Okay, so it's going to be something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, these bigger letters are more comfortable to paint than small letters. Small letters are murder sometimes. I got you. So is that about a standard size for you? Yeah, is that yeah, what you yeah, like see, the see best? How, how much easier it is to paint, it's comfortable. Well, about a two-inch letter? Yeah, two and a half. Two and a half, you can get a good... Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy. It's a lot easier. Okay, so I guess some people maybe thought the small letters are easier. No, no, the big ones, like a five, six inch letter is, 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 is real good to work with. Okay, they're twice that big what you're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. So you can, you can almost paint upside down, it backwards anyway. You know, we can even draw upside down, can't we? Yes, I've seen you do it. <laughs> mm. See, uh, I'm, these are not exactly deformed letters, but you know they're they're just, you know fast letters, you know. See, but I think that looks good like that. They give an old school look. 
See now, see how much more comfortable it is? Painting. Oh yeah, almost paint itself. And this is one shot sign paint. Also I'm using with, with a good uh, squirrel tail bristle brush from Peachtree City, Georgia. Good quality brushes. Also, I want to say hello to the people in, in England. They gave me some uh, good comments. Uh, people in Germany, uh, people in uh, Scotland, and uh, Canada. I appreciate their, their, their good comments. This old hillbilly, don't forget. See, now this here is just a little bit rusty. See, the paint not flowing like, it, you know, real good, but yet, you know, it's the paint not right. You know, it's, it's trying to, you know, not, not flow because it's got rust. Uh, rust, oh yeah, that paint's so much better. Better. So the painting or the drawing that you've done of the junkyard up here, what year did you do that of those stacked trucks? How far back was that paint yeah. drawing? I think 2007, I believe. 2007. Yeah, the, the owner, uh, Mr. Lane, he, he okayed for me to uh, go uh, go back there and, you know, and, and draw them. You know what would make an interesting video? What's that? Let's go back and see if we can find them three stacked vehicles and see what they look like okay. today. Well, that's I, been almost 18 years ago. Yeah, I talked to, to the, the, the Lane uh, folks and see if that'd be okay. Mr. Lane passed away, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah I liked him. He was, a, he was a good guy. He had a big collection of old cars that oh, we're hoping, yeah, yeah, we're hoping we can get on there to film it, ain't we? Yeah, big and uh, yeah, that'd be nice. I'm just about done now. Let's see. We let's see here. We do. look like we can do a little painting on the motor sacco. Yes, sir. Let's see here. Get it round is fairly. Here. There's some old okay. bike books that uh, Perry's got. How about that? Yeah. In 1973, looks yeah, like what, maybe. Yeah. What we do, we'll kind of paint around. Fifty years ago. Fifty years ago. I was building them bikes back then. Was you? Oh, yeah. See now, we, we'll go with white in some places of it. Then we'll fill it in. See bars. Okay, now then we'll come back with color on it after a while. Just get an old gas tank. A custom gas tank. In a minute we'll put a little color on this dude. I notice you put your hand, one hand on the other hand. That helps keep it steady yeah, there. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I drink a lot of coffee and it's, and it's kind of wobbly at times. So how much coffee do you drink a day? Um, about at least a pot of coffee, at least black. Drink it black. Before you leave the house? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got a neighbor that lives up the road. And he's from uh, Wales, England, whatever. And he said, one of these days you can come over at my house and drink some tea. I said, British tea? I said, all right, we'll do it. <laughs> okay. We made a flame, baby. We don't want it to look solid. Sort of streaky, just a little bit. Yeah, good streak. Yeah, I like that streak. That looks good. Character, character, and burn it up. Here we go. Anyway. I wonder if there's any. Could you put? You think about putting some kind of little design on that tank with that yellow? Why, sure. Why not? Right. I don't know. What do you think about putting on there? A flame, I guess. A flame on the tank. Okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. We we'll do it in person, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. There you go. There you go. Mixed right in with the red. Yep. Gave it orange, sort of. So this is some of Ricky's door inventory for uh, this upcoming year. We've got a lot of door skins, uh, truck doors, car doors. We've got some hoods, deck lids, uh, and we got a lot more of them too that aren't here. But we want to put a little bit out here to kind of give you an idea of what we have for inventory. And Ricky, what he's doing now is he's pressure washing them, scraping any loose rust off. 
sand them really lightly if he needs to, and then he puts on a coat of uh, clear matte Rust-Oleum or a regular clear automotive clear and gives it a slick coat so he can paint on it easier. And that's what he does to the outside shell. Yeah, and folks, uh, these, a lot of these has never been on a car. Uh, they're what the, a garage or, or auto body, you know, was aimed to use. Auto supply house over in North Carolina, yeah. and they just was... Uh, never been. Never been used on cars, never been hung on cars. So these are $99 too? Well, with the standard artwork, that's what Ricky said. Standard yeah. artwork, well, yeah, basic artwork, they yeah, started $99. With the standard, yeah. Okay, you got some more doors, I think, inside, don't you? Yeah. See what you got in there. Okie dokie. Well, you got over here, you got, this is a cool looking fender right here. quarter panel, ain't it? That's the whole side off, probably a 1950 Chevy. Yeah. Uh, two door sedan, 51, 52, 53, something in there, but that's a brand new side. Oh, that's yeah. the whole side. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was yeah. a door and a fender, yeah. but it's yeah. the whole yeah. side. Yeah, the whole quarter, quarter panel. Oh, yeah. that's nice. Yes, I like sir. that. Yes, sir. <laughs> that's, that's something you don't see every day. In the corner over here, we, there's some other colorful doors that are... Uh, just good pieces to paint on. You got the Chevy truck door that's in a good, strong red color. You got a 55 Ford door that's, uh, believe it or not, waterfall blue and snowshoe white. That was yep. the colors they were called back then. That's a pretty color too. But those are good doors to paint on. Uh, yes, those sir. might be a few dollars more because they're such solid doors and we got to pay more for those. This uh, Edsel door here going to Edsel Ed. That's also off of a 55 Ford. That color was called Coral Mist. And that's, uh, of course, 55. We hung a uh, 55 Chevy hood out here the other day uh, for an awning, and it is just called straight coral. So maybe Chevy had their coral out first, and then Ford says we gotta do something when that color line, and they came out with Coral Mist, 1955. Mm -hmm. But uh, these are all the standard $99 doors here, painted, ready to go. Yeah. Better than Edsel Eds. Ricky's got to paint the yeah. Edsel. Yeah, Put like, a final line on it. Look like some of already sold. Uh, the, the paint's still wet on them. <laughs> uh, this sign is going to go up in front of our little tiny house up front that uh, Private Ryan and myself are building. And that's the little cabin, tiny house we're going to build on people's lot. It's a site-built house. Uh, you saw it early this morning. And we'll have the first shell done in two or three weeks. Uh, it'll be all done, right in, ready to go. But this sign will go out front then. And that's what we're going to sell them for on a person's lot. We'll come over there and build them. Uh, he said he might go 50 miles from here, but we'll check on that when the time comes. Uh, and that's it. That's our corner. Old Marlboro, Studebaker Packard uh, advertisement from probably the early 50s. And uh, this is our shoe. We keep this hanging here because we want to keep reminding Ricky that we don't want to get our heads so big that we got to buy shoes this big. How about this door, the screen door, what's, is this original? Is that painted uh, or something? Yes, they, no, 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 no. They came off of an old country store in uh, Strawberry Plains, Tennessee. Uh, just an old old door I picked up out of East, there, East Tennessee. It's yeah. a Merida Bread. That's the way they used to advertise. That's a nice one. All right, folks, uh, Ricky and I want to thank our support team. That you don't see in the pictures, but they're out there. Uh, of course, our guest star, Monday who couldn't stay too long today. He had a, uh, a funeral to go to, but we've got some more good stories with Monday. Paulie, he's our hands-on guy. He does a lot of work around here. And he's the guy whose dad has the uh, pickup trucks, U-Haul trucks. Spence, he's out there in the junk carriage with me getting all these parts. And he trucks them in for us, uh, helps with a lot of stuff. Then we got Private Ryan out front, and he is our key grip. And those of you in the movie business know that's the young guy that moves all this stuff around for you. So that's our team and we want to thank all of them too. Uh, and especially our guy, Kenny, that helped us with the electric and uh, we roughed this in in one week and finaled it the following week and got it opened up for today. Thanks everybody. See you next yeah. time. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs>